Well, good morning, everyone, and hope you all are having a blessed Friday, or at least mildly tolerable one. That's the most we can hope for. <laughs> but hopefully this reading might uh, pick you up today. Don't know what it'll be yet, but uh, fingers crossed. Strap on that seat belt, arms and legs inside the car, please. Now prepare for an exciting ride. And today I'm doing a surprise uh, special reading. For the people that left comments in yesterday's video, I'm uh, gonna give all of you all a, a free sample reading of uh, the new tarot deck I got, Crawley's, um, from uh, Sherry Knotts. And it's uh, a first time thing with them, so I'm not sure how good they will be. You all will have to let me know. But everyone else will still get a, uh, a tarot card. If you all would like to get a free side special card reading, then uh, leave comments on on the videos you never know when i'm going to pick one just uh leave a like and a comment and uh you're automatically entered excuse me if i sound a bit groggy this morning it's uh 2 45 a.m coming to you live from the hills of west virginia it's presently a cloudy 52 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty warm for this area this time of year. Pretty warm indeed. All right, here we go. Well, I feel good about that cutting. Oh. Okay, your card will be. The Queen of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles card depicts a beautiful woman sitting on a decorated throne holding a golden coin. Surrounding her are beautiful blossoming trees and green floral gardens. Her throne is decorated with various beasts of the earth, tying her closely with nature and abundance. At the bottom of the card, on the right-hand side, a rabbit is pouncing onto the frame, which symbolizes her high energy and fertility. The Queen of Pentacles, therefore, depicts a certain level of success and prosperity. But the rabbit at the bottom cautions us that we should be careful of where we leap when we are chasing that success. The Queen of Pentacles represents both a down-to-earth woman who plays many roles to ensure that she keeps her family happy. She knows how and when to show love, keeping an orderly home, cooking comforting meals, and taking care of her children. But do not mistake her for being only a homebody. Alongside all these motherly attributes, she can plan business ventures and execute her plans successfully. It is through her naturally talented business sense that she is surrounded by such luxury. She is quiet and does not like disclosing her financial accounts, fearing that it could bring more complexity to her life, which she desires to keep rather simple. She may have a secret bank account that nobody knows about, for she may choose to be careful, vigilant, and self-sufficient. The Queen of Pentacles, therefore, represents a motherly figure who desires to help you maneuver your way and achieve your goals with the help of her common sense. She will not only show you love, but she will also show you the way forward whenever you seem to be stranded and confused. With her advice, she will ensure that you do not make any dangerous financial decisions. She offers you precautions, principles, and support, all lessons that she has learned in her own personal life. Because she is a self-made woman, she wants, too, for you to be independent and wise, 
such that you are able to raise others and make them responsible as well. The Queen of Pentacles, in love, is a worldly, practical, generous, hard-working, and warm person who has a talent both for business as well as comfort and luxury. She enjoys making her home welcoming, always delighted to have guests. Single folks right now should be in a wonderful position to choose a partner that is truly bringing something into your life. You'll likely have high standards and hope for someone who has the same level of dedication, commitment, and ambition as you do. If you're already in a relationship, you may find that the two of you are enjoying a stable, fruitful, and prosperous time in your life together. You can certainly afford to indulge a little and treat yourselves. Career-wise, when it comes to all things career-oriented, the Queen of Pentacles card can bring great success. She is a talented businesswoman who is practical, organized, and very capable in anything she puts her mind to. In your life, she can appear as a successful person who may make a great mentor, colleague, or business partner. If you do choose to collaborate with her, you'll find her that her vast skill set will be invaluable to your career or your, pro your professional projects. If she offers advice, listen to it. She cares for you and will help you accomplish your goals. Financially, the Queen of Pentacles offers abundant success and material security. You may find that after a period of hard work, you have all that you need to feel comfortable. This card represents a responsible person who knows how to balance enjoying life's pleasures with practicality, frugality, and good taste. She will always look for a good deal, but will never compromise on quality. Okay, so there you have it. Okay, now um, here's the deck that uh, Sherry bought me. And I'm not familiar with how these are read exactly. I'm working on it just to be a, a warning for you all. But uh, you all can be the judge if I'm on the right path or not. And uh, since I'm still trying these out, I will give just a very minimal reading for these. There is a lot to be said for each of these cards. And the readings could be very long, indeed. So I'm only going to be doing one of the smaller ones for everybody. So here goes. Let me look back at yesterday's uh, comments. Okay. Oh, here's uh, Susan Parker. Oh, and uh, yes, uh, if you could, uh, please give a prayer out to Susan Parker's uh, mother-in-law and her family um, because uh, she's having some health issues and uh, and it's in a lot of pain right now. If you could uh, say a prayer or two for her, I'd really appreciate it. But anyway, uh, for Susan, here, let's give Susan a, uh, a reading. Yeah, I haven't gotten these broken in yet. They're still new and slick. Woo, would you look at that? Okay, it does not want to stay. <laughs> I 
<laughs> or do I have a haunting? Something made my microphone drop yesterday during the during the reading. Okay, Susan has. Okay, Susan, you have satiety, the Ten of Cups. All right, Susan, this card seems to have uh, two separate uh, possible meanings. On the external level, this card means that we experience a good time, but have already passed beyond the accumulation of this experience. The development allows for no further increase of intensity. It is thereby a first exhortation to inwardly prepare oneself with all the feelings of thankfulness for the approaching departure and slowly open up to new tasks. Now on the inward level though, this card means it is a longing for infinity that occupies us, the merging with God and the search for inner truth. The hunt for external values no longer fulfills us, for we have too often experienced that we only want what we cannot have and that we cannot be happy with what we do receive. If we now recognize that our deepest longings cannot be fulfilled here on earth, there opens up for us the insight that in this longing is the power that leads us beyond ourselves to the divine. First, however, it is necessary to strengthen the ego consciousness, for when we open up to the unconscious, which is Pisces, without previously securing our ego, which is Mars, through structured boundaries, Saturn, against the boundless, we risk the danger of being consumed. That's kind of uh, hmm, mystical. I hope that might have made some sense to you, Susan. Okay, now going down the list, next is Kim Fitzgerald. Okay, Kim, you have the Knight of Swords. Oh, Susan, I hope I showed you that card. By the way, I'm sorry if I didn't. All right, the Knight of Swords. Odysseus is a symbol for the power of the intelligent, quick, clever mind represented here in its most imaginative, brilliant, versatile, completely contradictory manner, as well as in its wily, ironic, and crafty nature. When this card appears, it is time to use and develop the ambient gift of mental power. It can help us to understand, perceive, and achieve clarity. However, its misuse leads to coldness, deadening feelings, heartless, and insidious maneuvers, and all the vile efforts of the tyranny of the mind. Okay. I hope that made some sense for you. Kim?
Okay. Now we have uh, Thomas. Now, Thomas has fortune. If the wheel is the present constantly rotating into the future, then the present of the hub of creation is where the future is created through transformation of the past. This is how the Egyptian sun god speaks of himself. I am Chepara of the morning, Re at noon, and Atum in the evening. Chepara is the morning beetle, Re is the midday sun, and Atum the paling old man who climbs into the moon bark. Everything is subject to constant transformation, and through the eyes of the Sphinx, we must direct our gaze to the lawfulness responsible for this interplay. This makes it clear that it is the same movement that turns upward on one side and downward on the other. Which side of the wheel we experience is not so much a matter of outer experiences and circumstances, but more a question of our inner willingness to adjust to changes. Okay. Next we have up Sherry. My friend that gave me these cards. So let's see what Sherry gets. Oh, Sherry, you've got the lovers. This is one of the most complex and intricate cards of the Major Arcana because it portrays sexuality and human love with all its contradictions and simultaneously with the alchemy of the universe. The card represents the power of love itself, the creative love that can be very striking, but also just as destructive when one overlooks the instinctive fervor that can burn away every bit of reason and logic within its flames once it has erupted. Sexuality is a means by which we first break out of the isolation of our egocentricity. It forces us to open up to that which is outside us and lets us search for the connection to other people because it is through this connection that we experience a deeper meaning of life in its orientation toward growth and increase. It is one of the great wonders that humans are integrated into the cycle of the eternal, despite their ego-oriented and over-rational separation from nature. And the glue in, in this process is sexuality. However, this card also points out that a necessary decision is connected with the experience of love, the rejection of the previous scope of life, the parental home, the bachelor life, the many flirtations, and the clear avowal of the one love. This step not only leads to the overwhelming experience for which the lover stands, but also the reason why the card used to be called the decision. It can just as well indicate necessary decisions having little or nothing to do with love. In such cases, it means that we should decide it from the depths of our hearts without rancor and without holding other doors open for our, ourselves. Which of these two options are emphasized by the card can only be discerned according to the background of the question asked. In any case, that means a yes from the bottom of the heart and of one's own accord. 
Okay. There you go, Sherry. And now we're doing that. I doing there? <laughs> now that. Okay. This changes a little bit. Nat has the night of discs. And this changes from ordinary tarot cards because normally this would be the pentacles. So in this deck, they have discs instead of pentacles. But anyway, this means, in the general experience, the knight of discs is a synonym for constancy, imperturbability, and a course of action guided by sober assessments. There are periods of doing a proper job instead of being satisfied with doing things just halfway. This card also represents times of harvest when it is important to extract and maintain the best possible results from a development. Okay. Okay, and last but not least, we have Drew. Okay, and Drew's card will be Oops. Dominion. And that means, on the inner level, this card encourages us to deal with the theme of violence, which has not just been outlawed in our times, but was also illegal for the Olympians. The double sim symbolism of the card graphically shows that also in the spontaneous inflaming and discharging violence there can be a beneficial aspect, which we certainly cannot do justice to, through the suppression of taboos. All right, Drew, there you go. All right, so you all tell me if these apply to you in any way, any way, shape, or form. And I'll tell me how much more I need to do with these cards before I'm ready for the big time. <laughs> anyway um, now here is a, a little bit of a clip from uh, when we were out the other evening that uh, I thought was cute so check it out so we're driving along here and I see this street sign and I have to stop and get a picture of it. So I ask Albert to pull over. And he doesn't just stop. He keeps on going. So I have to uh, I have him stop and walk back to take a picture of this sign. So in the process of doing this walking, here's the sign I'm taking a picture of. So yes, I literally had to take a walk down memory lane to get this picture. The funny thing about memory lane, it runs into a dead end 
<laughs> Memory lane goes nowhere. That's sad. Okay. So I hope you have a blessed day ahead. Uh, peace. Believe. And until tomorrow. Bye-bye.